Hey everybody, welcome to Cincinnati Real Producers Podcast, powered by Nextdoor Photos. I'm Patrick Braddock, owner and publisher of Cincinnati Real Producers. And I'm Daniel Ziegler, owner of Nextdoor Photos. Every week, we're getting to know Cincinnati's top realtors. Our goal is to elevate and inspire the real estate community throughout greater Cincinnati. All right, today we have Scott and Jill Ferguson, AKA Spouses Who Sell Houses, brokered by Keller Williams Advisors. Scott began selling real estate in the 90s, but in 2016, Scott got relicensed and the pair began working together. Their career sales volume is over $141 million. In the past two years alone, their volume was over 51 million. Scott and Jill are located in Monroe and sell in both the Cincinnati and Dayton markets. Welcome to the show, Scott and Jill Ferguson. Thank you. Thank you. Nice Turning to be up here. the heat. <laughs> Turning up the heat. That's awesome. <laughs> no, that's good stuff. I think it's really fun that you guys get to to work so closely together. I think there's not too many other industries where that's really a, a possibility. I mean, outside of just entrepreneurship and that sort of thing, it's like it's not a very common thing. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. and we kind of do things a little bit differently than a lot of, than some husband and wife teams or, or, uh, you know, partner teams. Uh -huh. Um, and it kind of grew organically, yeah. um, to, you know, Scott had gotten in a little bit before I did. I got my license just to help out on nights and weekends, which I did for the first couple of years. And, you know, I really liked focusing on the marketing and the listing side of things and the operations and the finances. And Scott really enjoys working with the clients. Okay. Um, so he does, you know, he works with all the buyers and does I all the negotiating. Out in the field. For yeah. sure. Yeah. That's awesome. sitting, sitting behind a desk is not my gig. Mm -hmm, sure. Yeah. And out and about is, is what I like to do. The negotiation piece of it, I really enjoy. And, yeah. And dealing with the face, you know, being able to deal face to face with people. Uh -huh. Yeah. So kind of organically, we kind of, you know, because we have such different personalities and enjoy doing different parts of it, he kind of, you know, gravitated towards that and that's what he's good at and then i kind of gravitated towards the others the other part of things and that's what i'm good at and we both enjoy you know we do what we enjoy mm -hmm. and i always tell everybody like together we make one really good real estate agent <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, just everybody, the way, you know, they're wired, like you've got people that are very like data driven or socially driven, et cetera, et cetera. It's hard to find one person that, that encompasses all of that. Sure. And mm -hmm. that's why, yeah, she loves saying that and like together we we'll make one great real estate agent. Yeah. <laughs> when well, did you guys recognize that? Like, uh, you know, I know that you said Scott was in a little bit before you, and I know you taking the leap out of your job prior was a, was a big you know, leap of faith. I know talking to you guys previously about that, mm -hmm. but like, how, how did you, when did you recognize that, man, this, this might be, this might be a really good fit for me to jump, jump in full time as well. Well, it, so it was kind of funny. So I had, I had been traveling a lot with work, um, with, with my previous job as a program manager. And so I did a lot of the stuff that I could do on nights and weekends that didn't necessarily require me to be in front of a customer during the day. And then we went to, we started coaching with Tom Ferry, went to the first Tom Ferry marketing edge event up in Chicago. And it was, uh, it was like in the spring of 2018, he's shaking his head. That was mind blowing. <laughs> All yeah. The stuff they had. Yeah. And I like it, it literally, it blew my mind. And then I, I was, so we, after the first day, at the end of the first day, they had like a cocktail party afterwards, like a mixer thing. And then afterwards we went to the hotel bar and sat down and had a drink and we were kind of figuring out where to go to eat and, you know, kind of talking the download of the day. And I said, I, I really am into this. Like, I want to quit my job and do this full time. And Scott was like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> pump, the, pump, pump the brakes a little bit right. here. Hold on, crazy lady. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, you know, so we worked with our coach and put together a plan based on that. And then, you know, a few, it was a couple months later, then I made the transition to full time into real estate. Wow. And, uh, you know, I'd been in corporate America for 25, 20, 25 years. So I wasn't sure how, if I would like the 
freeness of it with the schedule. Um, and I really was surprised that I have not really missed the structure of corporate America at all. Yeah. Mm. You know, I was really, I was really kind of surprised by that. I know a lot of people leave corporate to get into real estate, so they don't have that structure and they want that. I didn't really, that really wasn't my thing. I just really enjoyed the marketing side yeah. of stuff. Mm. It was a scary step. To okay. go from, you know, at least one fixed income, <laughs> yeah, sure. you know, and I'm still trying to get business going and, you know, luckily things did fall into place pretty well. I mean, we weren't, yeah. we weren't doing tens of millions like our first two years, um, but it quickly got to that. Like right. In, that third year, year that I left yeah. in, yeah. in the middle, in the beginning of the summer of 2018, like that was when things just turbocharged. Um, we just did shy of 20 million, like maybe 15 or 18 or something yeah. like that. And wow. it went up every year from there. Yeah. Wow. So I, it was, the, uh, you know, cause like I left work that, you know, the last day you leave at noon, you get to leave early. <laughs> and, um, I was like, I, I'm thinking that morning, I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, what if we don't ever sell another house again? <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Like, Those what have ifs. I done? <laughs> and Start uh, calling recruiters, yeah, right. thing for me. Well, yeah. and then, like, about as I'm, I'm thinking this, like, a little while later, I get a text message from somebody who was a buyer and they said, Hey, can we look at this house at one o'clock today? I was like, Okay, sure. So I was like, All right, good. We're not going to starve to death, <laughs> right? So, did you have the showing at one? You left yeah. your job at noon and, and you're at your first showing at one. I, I love of, it. I kind of a couple <laughs> situations like that where she was out working with clients quickly yeah. started to define the roles mm. because she found, you know, she would get asked questions she didn't know the answers to. And it was hard to say, you know, in corporate America, sometimes it's hard, it's really tough to go. I don't know. Right. Yeah. You know, we're all told that, you know, that's a better answer than, you know, not saying anything, but yeah. um, the pressure. Yeah. was kind of like, but oh. You know, Scott, though, like he just seems to know about probably from your background because you've had a wide variety of jobs and you've done, you know, different contractor things. But like, you know, when you go into a house, I'm looking at like how it's laid out and how big the kitchen is and, mm -hmm. you know, what we can do to update it and things like that. Whereas Scott's looking at it and he's like, oh, well, this, you know, the mechanics are need to be replaced or updated or, you know, the roof is end of life and things like that. And so yep. he does a lot better with that than I do. Well, when you represent somebody as a as a buyer's agent and you know it's 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 not there to necessarily sell them a house it's possibly you're there to tell them why they shouldn't buy that house right you know so it's really being an advocate for them and looking out for them you know and it's not even necessarily the first time home buyers even people with experience that haven't moved in a while or or just really don't have that knowledge or that eye for some of those things you know like well this roof looks like it's original you know you've got siding peeling off these cracks in the foundation i think are going to be serious you know blah 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 mm -hmm. you know and go through but then also try and tell them like this is how we're going to address this through inspections and things like that and tell them that we've got really good partners that we work with and that mm -hmm. we have a whole laundry list of contractors that can handle everything from the cracks in the foundation to repainting the house etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know to bring that comfort down and that's one of the biggest things that we hear back from our clients is that you know they felt like they were very well taken care of very well guided and very well represented and then one of the biggest things that we hear on both sides of the table is how easy we made the process mm -hmm. for them yeah that's key. great yeah, which I think, you know, comes from our different strengths. And then also where we don't, um, you know, some of the, the you know, the fall, small things that we yeah. don't really care to do. We have a good team of people that are on that work with us that fill in the blanks there. Like we've got a transaction coordinator and she takes care of all the details. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that's great. Because yep. I'm probably more detail oriented than Scott, but when it comes to all the that level of detail, like she does an amazing job with it, mm -hmm. and you know everybody's like, "Oh, you made it so easy." That's so, awesome. Yeah, Samantha's Samantha's awesome. Yeah, if it wasn't for her, it would be tough to get through some of these deals for sure. Yeah, especially when you're busy. Yeah. Now, if we could just figure out some way to make it easier to pack and actually move, yeah. we could sell like twice as many houses. <laughs> yep. That is not fun. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is the bummer of the whole thing is the packing is. and the moving. Yeah. <laughs> but we have we have a great partner for that that will come and pack every every 
item in your house up for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, your clothes, all your knickknacks, mm-hmm. furniture, silverware. She'll do everything. Or we've had clients that have hired them just for the big stuff. Right. Yeah. You know, so they're really, really good. Yeah. They come in because we've used them twice now and they'll come in there for two weeks, just pack and pack and pack it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we, we kind of jumped right into the business, which is fun. That's our <laughs> natural tendency. Yeah. We all want it. That's it's amazing how that business. happens, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but just from hearing you talk, I got really curious, Scott, especially hearing, you know, you're talking about your background and some of the expertise that you kind of bring to the table from your past experience. But I'd love to hear from both of you. And you talked about corporate America. What, what I think, let's talk about what you did before real estate and how that has launched your career in real estate. And then I'm also curious how you met. <laughs> Um, well, let's talk about, we, you want to talk about the real estate part first? Sure. <laughs> we always lead with the real estate. Yeah. Always. Yeah. always. We live and breathe it, right? I know. Probably most of our friends are like, will they please stop talking about real <laughs> yeah. estate? Yeah. <laughs> I love that meme where they're like, they throw the person back out of the car three hours later because they wouldn't stop talking about real estate. Yeah. <laughs> that would totally be us. Yep. Um, but I, so I've been a project man. I had been a project manager in it for probably 20, 25 years mm-hmm. and had worked at all bigger companies in both Dayton and Cincinnati. Okay. Um, and really enjoyed doing that. Like there's nothing more thrilling to me than checking off a task being done. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, my his life head. is a spread <laughs> <laughs> yes that Just is one the big other, task that is the other thing too from corporate america and being in it is i love spreadsheets and pivot tables and pivot charts and you know making all sorts of fun stuff with that and comparing year over year growth and all i was like that. the biggest challenge like how can i put real estate in a pivot chart <laughs> yep. i figured it out i was gonna say <laughs> there's a way (laughs) um so but that's you know and being in it like i always enjoyed figuring out how to do things and so when he got into real estate and when i took classes like the big thing that resonated with me is everybody was like oh you need to get your database together of your contacts and i'm like well you know i've lived in dayton most of my life and know a bazillion people and scott's lived in cincinnati and mainville and he knows a bunch of people and we've worked at a bunch of different places and just have gathered people over the years and so i just really went to town on our database and really spent a lot of time you know i was traveling so i'm sitting in a hotel room you know three or four nights a week as i'm traveling you know doing stuff for kroger and um so i just worked on our database like just filling in blanks and it was i mean you know it was kind of a grind but it, it you know but it was a labor of love and i think that really helped mm-hmm. like having that it background and doing that and seeing the importance of it because well, it really paid i mean that's dividends. the biggest thing that they preach to you and, and this is you know one of the things advice for for new agents or even existing agents that are you know, may feel like they're stalling out in their business or what have you, or want to try and, you know, break through that ceiling they keep hitting every year is the database. When Jill and I were productivity coaches at, at, at Keller Williams, all the new agents would come through us and even agents that they would recruit from other companies um, that uh, were trying to turbocharge their, their, their careers or what have you. You know, the biggest thing that we said every time we met How's the database? How's the database? And, uh, you know, we would have them show us, you know, how many have you added? How many, you know, what are you mm-hmm. doing? Okay, now you've got your database. What are you doing to reach out to those people? And it's amazing that the importance of that, where, you know, when you're new into business, you don't have the money to spend, you don't have a budget to be able to do mass mailings and things like that typically. And it's like, this is really easy. Picking up the phone, mm-hmm. make the calls to your database and let them all know that you're not a secret agent, that you're out there and you're ready to do something for them. Mm-hmm. Right, because those people already know, like, and trust you. Right. So as opposed to, you know, I think a lot of people when they start out feel like they need to go and get leads. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they need to work on finding strangers to buy houses from them. And, you know, the really the best way to do it is to just communicate yeah. with your database. You don't have to be flooding them all the time with, you know, prop, right. you know, selling and all that, but like the marketing is key yeah. within your sphere of influence. So for me, hmm. I was I've had probably the majority of my jobs been customer service jobs, but also IT. 
okay. um, and, and which is considered customer service the way they look at it in, in most in most companies. Um, but I have been doing IT since I think 2000, somewhere around 2001. Okay. somewhere around there uh, with, with different companies. And my last company I was with before transitioning to real estate, I guess it's really not a company, but educational, but I was with UC Health. Huh. So I was an IT manager there. I had 13 employees that answered to me and then had a lot of upgrade events that would happen through where I might have like up to 30, 30 people that would answer to me. And we handled all the... Uh, the remote locations for the University of Cincinnati uh, medical side. So all the little physician offices from Dayton down to Northern Kentucky, wow. my team handled those. Um, Lindner Center of Hope, Drake Hospital, and then some of the ancillary buildings and so forth around. So, um, yeah. So being in that field, I think, you know, you're, you're all about the, the customer experience. And I will say in all the jobs that I've had in IT, Healthcare was probably the most demanding of that quality in a person, um, just because depending on what type of department you're going into, cardiology or whatever, you know, you can tell there's a lot of stress levels with things. So you really kind of had to be very delicate sometimes in situations, you know, no was not an option for mm -hmm. a lot of these physicians yeah. and and. The, the support staff and things like that. Well, it was very, it was stressful. And that's very transferable to real estate. I was going to yeah. say that <laughs> has to yeah, be because, but... I mean, I, mean I, I love doctors. I praise doctors and nurses, but doctors can have such high intelligence that they're kind of awkward to talk to. So, like, yeah. that's probably a transferable quality too, like just being able to speak to everybody, you know? It's, and, been, it's been huge. It's been huge in real estate to be able to take adverse situations and talking it off the ledge yeah whether it's with a client or another agent sure yeah, interesting think, and scott's really good at that because sometimes yeah. i get crazy <laughs> for sure so but tell them about some of your previous jobs and you know like oh what, what all led up to that was my <laughs> experience working on a as a ranch hand on a 1600 <laughs> acre ranch up in holy cow this was part of our this was part of my <laughs> This kind of segues into how we met because not the ranch thing, but <laughs> I had a profile set up on match.com that was basically a bullet point list of my qualities. And one of the things on there is, you know, that I was a ranch hand and that I know how to castrate cows because we had to do that. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of crazy. But um, you put yeah, that so bullet point that in on your match.com. <laughs> he I did had that during high school. All these <laughs> random things. It was funny. And it was I was funny. like, <laughs> Who is this I'm guy? Sorry, I, I, well, like, I said I was a social community that I could blend into any social situation. I yeah, and that he knew every word to fucking I mean, we call Medina and like fifteen or, plus years ago. Yeah, but so. it was yeah. That's great. Wow. Yeah, it was kind of fun. Yeah, I've done it. I've done it all. I mean, out of college, I moved to Hilton Head, South Carolina, and and I mean, what a better place to live. Although I'd been vacationing there ever since I was a kid, and my parents and my aunt and uncle had houses there so we actually got married there on the 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 homeowners homeowners beach and sea pines mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but uh yeah i worked as a maid on a sailing boat i worked on the harbor town golf links where they play the masters i mean i worked in catering i mean it was it was crazy the the stuff that uh yeah i always had like two jobs whenever i was that's wild like, mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> always worked a lot. A range hand. Yeah, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, my good friend that got me back into real estate, we went to college together, and he was one of my roommates when we lived in in Hilton Head. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I owe him a lot for getting me back into and like get out for of that, sure. Come back to real estate. Like, All right. <laughs> yeah, which is which has done well for us. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So how long have you been in real estate then? So, well, I was originally licensed. I believe it was around ninety five. That's when I came back from Hilton Head, I believe, or shortly after I came back from Hilton Head. Um, and then I lasted maybe like three years. I think I looked because you can still look all that up in the MLS. Yeah. I think I sold like 10 houses in three wow. years or seven houses, something like that. It was not, <laughs> it's not a lot. We and, have that I many mean, closing in July. The, pro the, yeah. the problem with that was, you know, my 
buddies would call me out. Hey, you want to go play golf? Like I had a buddy that worked for UPS and he, you know, would always have time. We'll go, you don't want anything? Nope. We'll yeah. Play golf. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So having fun was more important than selling houses at that uh, time of my life. Yeah. Interesting. I wish I had known that when I know now. Real estate was a lot different back then, but yeah, I got out as quick as I got in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then back in, in 2016. But you've always, you know, like I remember when we, you know, like every time we go on vacation, like Scott always liked to like drive through and look at the houses and he looks at oh, stuff yeah, on the villa. I've always real estate and architecture and stuff. Yeah. So in 2016, when you were like, I'm thinking about maybe getting my license again, you know, and I was like, oh, I think you should do that. You seem to really enjoy it and like it, like, you know, go for it. And I said, well, why did you get out of it in the first place? And then that's when he told me that story about going to play golf instead yeah. of selling houses. <laughs> you should have seen my golf game. I was on fire. <laughs> I was back then. I was, I was good. I, mean, yeah. I was like, I don't think that's going to be a problem now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. This is Ferguson too. It's going to yes, help with yeah. that. 2.0, baby. <laughs> So how'd you guys meet then? Um, we actually through met through Match.com. Yeah, that's awesome. Believe it or not. Yeah. I decided that I, I, it was in the middle of winter and I was like, you know, maybe I need a boyfriend. Like, I don't really want to leave the house to go out and have fun, but maybe I just want a, someone to hang out with. Yeah. And uh, so I, my criteria was I did not want somebody who was looking for a soulmate. <laughs> that seemed like too much for me. Um, so, but we met and got engaged quickly and got married quickly and, you know, have been together. will be 12 years in August Good that we got you. married. Congratulations. So, yes. That's awesome. Thank I you. was, I was a little worried when we, when I left my job and we went into, you know, we're both doing real estate full time that first week or so we, um, we went, we were doing a bunch of errands, like trying to fix up our office. So it was comfortable for both of us. And we had comfortable chairs and we had everything we needed. And so there was a lot of like running errands together. Mm. And then one day we drove to the office together in the same car. And I was like, oh, we're never doing this again. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> well, no, 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 no. I to be able to leave. No, the worst one was doing <laughs> was the idea of the poinsettias at Christmas time. Uh- <laughs> So a lot of agents will do like appreciation gifts throughout yeah, the year. Pies and all that. So yeah. we had, yeah, the pies. And we had this great idea of doing poinsettias at Christmas time. Well, first of all, we didn't know that poinsettias, even though it's a Christmas plant that everybody gets at Christmas time, does not tolerate cold at all. No. Like, like even for 30 seconds. Like literally, if you go from the end of the parking lot to the door, that thing might be dead. Like they're that susceptible. <laughs> I mean, they're like really bad. So- we're driving around. She has got 150 of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so here's another funny history, job history thing. So she's got this list of how we're going to run this route. And I look at this thing. I'm like, that's ridiculous. She goes, what do you know? I go, well, I was a driver for Airborne Express, so I know how to run around. <laughs> I'm like, this doesn't make any damn sense to me. <laughs> Your logistics factor is not there. So anyway, but I tell you, yeah, we wanted to kill each other that day. Because yeah, one was... would, you know, she would drive, I'd take the poinsettia. And then, of course, if they're not home, you can't leave them on the porch. Right. Yeah. Right. Cold out. So they ended like, Bring them back, come yeah, back again. Like, Thanks for the dead yeah. plant. <laughs> You're knocking at the door. You're knocking. Oh. Yeah. Enter, enter yeah. before it dies. Before it dies. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a miserable. It was a that was yeah. a horrible, yeah. horrible idea. Right. Well, I think I got it from somebody <laughs> and, on our at Tom Ferry. It's warm. Right. Well, and yeah. I didn't realize Head, that. <laughs> like a couple people on our Tom Ferry page and our private group had suggested that. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. I'm like, yeah. I always like having points set at Christmas. <laughs> sure. It dies on like by the 28th, but whatever. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's a great idea. Uh, so I, you know, made arrangements and we had like 85 of them. So, I mean, this was, and, you know, now we, now it would probably be close to four or 500, but, you know, at the time we had 85, which seemed like a lot. And, you know, and we were all over the place because we've sold houses in Northern Kentucky. We've sold houses all the way up in Troy. Wow. And, you know, now we're a little bit more concentrated, you know, usually between 275 and 675. But, Mm. you know, at the time we were, we were driving a lot. Yeah. I used to be licensed in Kentucky and gave that up like three years ago maybe maybe so now we just refer that refer that out Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah we have a partner that was a lot like it saves you a little bit of driving well and during covid you know it was so hard to win houses yeah you know i mean we had plenty of homes where we had 20 offers or more and to 
keep driving down to, you know, Kentucky and, and not winning. I mean, that got, that, that got tiresome real quick. Cause yeah. you only, when you're a buyer's agent, you only be in one place one time. At right. one time. You know, if you're a listing agent, you can handle, I mean, we go to Mexico quite a bit for vacation and it's easy to manage 20 listings while you're staying in a, you know, yeah. at a resort. As long as you got internet and access, Wi-Fi, that's all that matters, right? right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's what's important. And a cell phone. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about the dynamic of, um, of you guys being a couple in real estate, you know, like how do you guys work through, um, you know, the 24 seven and always being <laughs> in each other's faces. And like, is there anything you do to, to kind of give yourselves a break or anything like that? Yeah. Well, the so, first thing to say is yes, there are some times where you want to strangle each other. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll just, just get that right out there. How many times a day? Right? Right? How many times there a day? That's the question. You know? Well, like, I feel it's... like the, those times happen more often when we're in the same space for long periods of time. So what works best in my and like scott's an early person i'm a late person so you know when scott you know gets up and go heads into the office and he does his thing in the office a lot of times and then i work from home a good amount of time and because i'm a little bit slower to get going in the morning and then you know you kind of peel off early you know mid mid afternoon if you don't have showings and then you know i'll kind of work later until dinner time and you know then we kind of come back together and do a download of what's going on i mean it's it's so nice having those defined roles because like us we we hang out with people that are also in real estate you know got a a wife who's an agent and a husband who's a an agent and a contractor, another one who husband's agent, she's a loan officer, others that are agent agent. And especially like the agent agent ones, some of the ones we know, they both do the same things. Mm-hmm. And or, or they'll do they'll divide their duties by their deal. So if if they have a listing and and they got we'll just say he got the the, the the contact like he'll take care of all the marketing and da 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 for for that listing and then you know if she gets one she'll do that and if the buyer comes in and it's you know somebody that they one of the other primarily worked with and they'll handle that and I, I mean it works for them I mean you you talk to ten different teams twenty different teams and talk about the different dynamics of those teams everybody will have different answers sure. of the way that they've got responsibilities divided up but it's nice being in those groups because we always just talked about real estate. I mean, there's always so much going on. You got the whole thing with NAR and the the, the lawsuit and stuff like that. So, you know, everybody's always talking about that and, you know, what's your dialogue going to be once they finally figure out what they're going to do, et cetera, et cetera. But it's nice being able to be with people that do that and talk. And then the fact that we're both involved in it, um, I, I think that that helps with a lot of conversations. Um, you know, whether they're tough conversations or not about difficult situations, what have you, we're both in it. So mm-hmm. it's kind of nice being able to say, hey, I've got this situation and both try and figure out a solution. And I think that's what really helps with the IT background mm-hmm. that I want to point out is, you know, in, in that job, more so than any of the other 95 jobs I've had, <laughs> um, it's all problem solving. It's all figuring out how to get the square peg in the round hole without just, you know, shaving down the edges of it. Yeah. So I, I love that part of real estate and coming up with solutions and trying to figure out how to get it all done. And it's nice to be able to talk with her about that if yeah. I'm struggling or stumbling with, you know, with a thought or a situation. Yeah. I think it <laughs> helps to have that live, you know, to kind of talk through something before you get, before you talk to the client, you know, a lot of times we'll come up, you know, the other one may come up with different solutions. And we've had times where we've handed things off because, you know, one of us is talking to a client or some, or another agent or something, and it's just not going the way we would like for it to go. Right. Yeah. And, you know, so then we'll hand it off to the other one. And sometimes just having that change is a good Good well, that's, for that's a very important thing to bring up about, about us and, 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 and how, you know, we are, I I'm, can't think of what I'm trying to say, but how, you know, how we deal with people and how we are. Like, I know, mm-hmm. like 
if she's busy launching a listing or something, if I try to talk to her, I'm probably going to get my head chewed off. <laughs> um, but me being more of the, of the, um, the high eye and, and that kind of thing and more social aspect and kind of like the creative side of things, you know, when we, and she's being, you know, the spreadsheet stuff. So we go into a listing appointment and I think it's one of the things that adds to our success is because how we're wired differently. So if we go in, Oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm an engineer. All right. She's going to do all the talking because mm-hmm. yeah. they don't want to hear my stories. <laughs> yeah. You know, they just want to hear all the numbers. So, and then when she's like, Oh, I have spreadsheets. Like, Oh, Hey, let's you know, you see him go like, right up my head. All right. <laughs> All right, we're connected here. You know? And then the, the spouse and I are just like, sit back watching. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is one but, of the big things about, you know, having not just being in business with your spouse, but also having different personalities and different different exactly. things that we like doing. Yeah. You know, when we sit down with another, you know, husband and wife, a lot of times around the kitchen table at, at a listing appointment, you know, hopefully one of us appeals to one of them and yeah. we make that bond. Well, we feel like that's one of our biggest advantages walking in the door. And, and this is, and I'm sure any husband and wife team that you would interview would probably agree with the statement. Like, you know, they naturally are going to gravitate to a man or a woman or a type, a personality type. And yeah. we feel like we bring that to the table when we were with our, uh, previous brokerage, they did a lot of relocation. So people like your PNGers, your GE, et cetera, et cetera, that are either locating in or out. It was mostly leaving uh, to take opportunities elsewhere. But when we did those listing appointments, we were the highest conversion of all the Cincinnati offices for that brokerage and the Columbus. Wow. Um, I think we had like a 90 some percent conversion rate That's incredible. on Jeez. those. And matter of fact, one of the biggest feathers in our cap is we were doing a listing appointment because I was licensed in Kentucky at the time. And we were doing a listing appointment in Kentucky against the number one husband and wife team down there. And they're like, just giving you a heads up the, the our, uh, our reload person. She goes, just give you a heads up. She goes, nobody's ever beat this team. And we beat them. Wow. And by that, I mean, we, we won the listing. Right, right. Yeah. And that was a huge accomplishment. Um, but I think that, you know, the person that going back to the personalities, you know, well, that, I think that that's, really helps. Yeah. And I think that's why we win a lot of our listing appointments that we have. It's pretty mm-hmm. unusual for us to lose out well, on the, one. The other cool thing to mention about that is that client, he didn't even live in this house. He worked for Ernest and Julio Gallo Wines, hmm. which I don't know if they're around anymore. But anyway, mm-hmm. he was promoted to the director of marketing. So he, you know, he can relate to what we do as agents because that's the major piece of hiring an agent is, is we feel is marketing and negotiation. Yeah. And he said to us, I, I had to ask him, I said, so knowing who we were up against, I said, why did you select us? He goes, I'll be honest with you. He goes, that other couple, he goes, I felt like I could fly on my magic cow to the moon. He said something like that, which I thought was bizarre. He goes, but you two, he goes, you were the most pragmatic. He goes, I knew what you were telling me is what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And he's like, there was like no BS with you guys. And he goes, that sold me. Nice. And we've tried to, you know, I think about that experience all the time and feel like that's another thing. Like when we go through stuff, like, you know, we don't BS any of our clients. We're like, yeah, this room needs to be repainted. You know, the the, the chartreuse walls are not going to sell. We deal with a bunch of buyers. You know, we're not afraid to have those tough conversations. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I think they appreciate that. Yeah. But on to um, like what we do to, you know, for time for ourselves. You do the theater so, and stuff. and Yeah. So I, I mean, you know, I'll do the spa nails and hair and that kind of stuff too. But I also go to, you know, have theater t- season tickets up nice. at the theater, up at the Schuster, you know, so enjoy doing that and, you know, get together dinner with, um, you know, my friends from previous jobs, uh, that kind of stuff. And then we um, took up pickleball. Hey, hey January. All right. Shocker. Old people you and everybody else in Cincinnati. I'm actually, I'm actually uh, <laughs> sitting here two and a week, two and a half weeks out of knee surgery. So. Oh, man. <laughs> I torn yeah, MCL, so I so lost, I'm back. I'm well, going to be back next week. No yeah, kidding. I lost my partner for a couple of weeks, but I'm, I'm getting yeah. him back out on the court. Wow. Um, so, but yeah, we started playing that in January. I've played tennis my whole life and had some foot surgeries, you know, 10, 10, about eight or 10 years ago. And so had not been playing as much. And then 
um, had been interested in playing pickleball, but just hadn't gotten around to it. And then, you know, finally bit the bullet in January and we started playing and like now I'm, you know, I'm playing three, sometimes four times a week and, um, Scott's been playing too. And then, you know, sometimes we play together and, you know, sometimes we play as partners. Sometimes we just play in the same session and, you know, which has been fun. I, I enjoy doing that. Like I really, you know, it's fun way to get also get exercise. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you haven't played, it's that's a good time. Let's try yeah. it out. Yeah. yeah. So the Pickle Lodge is a great is a great place to go. Yeah, I was gonna say, and it doesn't hurt that they have a bar and a pizza <laughs> yeah. place in the Pickle Lodge. Yeah, they've got, they've got third, third Eye Brewing in there, which is which is funny because we actually sold the Brewmaster house. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. So get you know get the 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 uh, the heads up when some new stuff is coming nice. out. That's, that's worth great. trying and stuff like that. And then they have Two Cities Pizza, which is really good. Uh, yeah, yeah. we've got some great. really interesting people in real estate that yeah, have had different jobs in different places. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, it's funny you'll go somewhere sometime and you know be like, oh, well, I know the person. You know, I know somebody here because we sold them a house or helped sell their house. And, right. You know, which is always fun. Yeah, meet people all walks we, of life. We mm-hmm. so we uh, during COVID or when things started to open up from COVID, we uh, were I'm sure like everybody just wanted to get out of the house, you know, more than what we were allowed to do. And, and they started, you know, they opened up travels. So we went to Mexico, um, at the recommendation from a girl in our office and had the absolute best time, mm-hmm. um, became members of this resort, which has, I think 12 resorts that you can go to between Jamaica, Dominican, um, Cancun, Riviera Maya, Plato, Carmen, et cetera, Cozumel. Oh, yeah. Um, and have absolutely loved it. So we try to get there two to three times a year. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a big bourbon guy. There you go. So um, that that's, I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when she's you know doing stuff at the theater or whatever, you know, I'll uh, I'll start uh, cracking open some bourbon. Our my biggest disappointment is we sold our our house uh, in Lebanon, and I had this unbelievable bar in the basement. Oh. And it's absolutely gorgeous wood ceiling and everything. And it had a very nice display for all my, for all my bourbon, which I've got probably 400 bottles of wow. bourbon in my collection. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, and so now at the new house, we're in the process of finishing the basement and trying to figure out a nice layout for my bourbon mm-hmm. display. <laughs> but, cool. uh, I, I definitely have probably accumulated another 50 or hundred bottles since we've been in a new house. Yeah. But yeah, so that's my big thing. I love doing the bourbon, the bourbon tastings. I belong to a group that's local in Monroe where we live at, at the last Friday of every month. There's a few gentlemen that get together and talk about and drink bourbon. That's awesome. And my neighbors will come over and have some bourbons. I'm always wanting to try new stuff and share it with everybody. So it's fun. So yeah, if you guys are bourbon guys, you have to come. Absolutely. Have to come well, let me know when out. Jill's going out. I'll be <laughs> over. Well, if nothing else, when the, uh, when the bar finally gets done. Yeah. In the Grand basement. opening. Jill's yeah. at the theater. We're coming <laughs> over. <laughs> right. awesome. Yeah, for sure. But That's probably the biggest thing. Yeah, pick a ball, vacation, bourbon mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. Nice. yeah. I think it's important to have, I think the vacations are key in yeah. this business. You know, you get, you go hard, you, you know, it's, it's a lot of 24 seven sometimes, you know, we're especially on that cycle right now. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's important yeah. to have that time, you know, planned. Not that we're not, available and not working on vacation because a lot of times we are sure. but you know still be having that and planning that time especially when we go down with family because we'll take you know scott has three kids adult children that are in their 20s and we'll take them down with our, our grandchild we our have first grandchild nice. <laughs> turns two next Congrats. month yeah why yeah so well, that's fun i mean it's got to be stressful i mean it's it's the service industry and we talked about this earlier before we started recording about you know, turnaround time, you know, sometimes people want to move and they want to move tomorrow, you know? Right. And it's like, you guys were talking about how our job is to make sure they don't see everything that's going on behind the scenes. And if they want to move tomorrow, we'll, we'll make it happen, you know? Right. So yeah, no one wants to know how the sausage is made. Just, yeah. just make it happen and make it easy and it's all good. That's <laughs> awesome. But I can see where that stress would be, you know? So, mm-hmm. um, taking time for yourself and your mental health is, is yeah. very important. And it's very, in real estate, it's very hard to plan that. Yeah. Cause I'm trying, I don't remember when it was. It's, an, it's been since COVID, you know, January, February, usually decent times to, to, to depart. 
to go on vacation, something like that. August is usually a good time when kids are going back to school. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we always talk about it, it's never a bad time to sell your house, which is true. Um, but for us to find it, and then, like I was starting to say, like a couple, three years ago, our January and February was one of the biggest, it was one of our biggest first quarters oh, yeah, we've insane. ever had. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it was ridiculous. You yeah. know, and then even like this year, our March was the second highest volume month that we've had since we've been in real estate. Wow. wow. Yeah, and our most July of that, is looking to be that way too. Yeah, most of that groundwork gets laid, you know, December, January, February, to, you know, because mm-hmm. we've got, we had a ton of listing appointments in January and February that all came to fruition. Everybody wanted to list the end of February, mm. <laughs> the yeah. beginning of March. <laughs> yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So It's wild how that happened. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just crazy. And you just can't make any sense of the market. You can't predict anything as much as everybody tries. It's just... It's right. just darn near impossible. Right. I mean, who would have ever thought that a global pandemic, first of all, who would have ever thought that would have ever happened in a million sure. years, yeah. but who would have ever thought a global pandemic would turbocharge the real estate market? Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, it was just a, an amazing, it's amazing. A number of events. Like 99% together. of people thought it was going to go down, you know, yeah. like it's going to oh, tank. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's the thing, even though the interest rates are, you know, still, well, considered high if you had refinanced or bought it two or three percent yeah you know the interest rate today is high you know and there was all these talks because of election year that the rates were going to come down which they they haven't come down to where they said they were going to be which was in the fives so i think you know the buyers you know got tired of waiting because like we tell our clients you know by now you can always refinance you know if the rates come down into the fives you're gonna be back into the big bidding wars well the bidding wars have been going on for about three months now at least for us yeah. And it's tough. Every listing we've had and every buyer we've had has been in multiple offers, which, is, you know, which we're probably talking 25, 30, 30 deals. Um, that's not offers written where people were up against somebody else to win. Hmm. And it's just it's just crazy seeing that again. But it's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. But I think it, people got desensitized. I think people got desensitized to the rate. Like yeah. a year ago, they're not that much different than they were a year ago, but the the market is definitely different. The volume and yeah. the pace of what we're seeing is definitely yeah, different. And in, definitely in the more sevens now. where they are now, it's still lower than the fifty year average. Yeah. Right. right. Which was yeah. in the eights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's a great time to talk about some advice. Uh, that you guys want to offer. We've kind of started touching on a little bit, but before we do, I always like to just give a quick shout out to Back to Back Ministries here. Um, they let us use this amazing studio. So we're yes. super grateful. Yeah. Yes, it's a very impressive absolutely. studio. Yeah. Yes, it's very nice. This is great. Great that you guys are able to use this. Yeah. yeah. That's very generous of them. Absolutely. So Back to Back Ministries is a global nonprofit orphan care organization with their sights set on providing care for today and a hope for every tomorrow. From Cincinnati, Ohio to Hyderabad, India, staff teams around the world are stepping into hard stories and choosing to stay. To learn more about the work Back to Back does, how you can get involved, and why a global team won't stop until every child is known and loved, you can visit backtoback.org today. Very cool. Thank you, Back to Back. But with that said, we would love to hear advice that you might have for our (laughs) listeners. And that can be advice for Um, buyers and sellers. That can be advice for agents, whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's a dangerous thing to ask a real estate agent because we love (laughs) giving people our advice and our opinions. That's why it's one of the main segments of our (laughs) podcast. (laughs) Um, I'll I'll start with for agent advice. And this is probably a little different than maybe what some other people say. The one thing I wish we would have done or I would have known about when we first started and got into business was profit first. Hmm. Uh, we, I read the 2019, the fall of fall of 2019. I read the book cause I'd heard a lot of people mentioning it, but didn't really know what it was. And, and um, you know, read the book and then at the same time had was going through bold and our bold coach did like a morning session before bold started. So it was like eight to eight 30, which normally I don't absorb things that early in the morning, but I was lucky. <laughs> so he talked about it and kind of explained it in more of a, you know, easier way to digest. The book is easy to digest anyhow. Um, but putting the concepts to work is that's the hard part mm-hmm. is getting the setup and figuring it out. And so of course I have a spreadsheet. Um, but <laughs> you know, 
I wish that we would have known about that and use those practices when we first started in real estate, because that helped us tremendously when we went and when, you know, when we got into March, you know, I'd been doing it for about three months because I started kind of the end of 2019. Um, and it's just a way to kind of manage your money and, you know, you basically are splitting, you know, you're taking money and putting it into different accounts that are used for specific purposes. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had been doing that for about three months when we shut down in the middle of March. And, you know, had that happened in March of 2019, I'd have been in an all out panic. Sure. <laughs> but because I had been following that and, you know, managing our money that way, it made a huge difference. And, you know, we had the reserves to not panic, to, you know, weather through it. And it actually, you know, and everything turned out so much better than I ever would have thought. Hmm. But I really cannot say this enough it really anybody who's a small business owner or a small or medium business owner you know i would strongly recommend reading the book and you know i actually do a ce class on it as well in our market center because wow. i feel i feel very strongly about it i mean it's free to do it i don't get anything out of it if somebody else does it ex except for the satisfaction knowing that they're going to feel more comfortable and how they've been managing their money That's because awesome. I, I think it makes a huge difference mm -hmm. um but that, and then if you're a seller, it's never too early to call your real estate agent to talk about <laughs> selling your house. <laughs> yeah, uh, that brings up an interesting comment because I was thinking of advice for agents, but even advice for clients, for people that are out there looking to sell or buy, you know, it's in your best interest to at least interview more than one agent. I don't care if it's your niece or your nephew, your brother, your sister, who's the real estate agent. It's always good to interview, to know, to be able to compare, yeah. I, I think you owe it to yourself. I mean, you wouldn't have surgery probably without having a, you know, a consult from maybe another surgeon, you know, or if it's legal advice, you're probably going to consult more than one attorney. Mm -hmm. And here you are putting your most valuable asset into the hands of what is supposed to be a professional that's supposed to be able to, you know, negotiate the best for you. And that, you know, it, it I always say, I wish I could sell the same house twice or at the same time. Like you've got the identical homes next door to each other. We're and, kind of doing that now, though. And to be, and to be able, <laughs> well, yeah, I guess we kind of did uh, with one well, without a pool. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it, there could be tens of thousands of dollars left on the table just yep. in negotiation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just, it amazes me. And that's, I mean, that's not singular advice to, a, 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 an agent as well, I, you know, that would be a sit down on how to try and negotiate through things. Um, one of the things is, like, especially if you're newer in the business, do the database. Everybody tells you it is a lot of work, but put it together. And speaking of work, real estate's hard work. Yeah. I mean, Half yes. of our friends don't invite us, that aren't in real estate don't invite us to parties and get togethers anymore because we don't show up. I mean, weekends are, we're, we're busy all week, but weekends are, are really our time to go to work, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and that's when everybody else is off work and having, you know, birthday parties for 4th of July party, whatever it might be. And, you know, we're busy because I, I, and a lot of people will probably criticize me for this, but I put, we put real estate first. Um, we really do. I mean, it's our livelihood. It's how we survive. You know, you're not just going to you know, if you have a nine to five job, you're not just going to go, Hey, I'm not coming in Tuesday because right. I'm going to play golf and we're having a party. Yeah. Like you don't do that, you know, and, and we don't do that and shouldn't, I don't feel like should be expected to do that. Um, sometimes. Well, like, yeah. Like Saturday night was a good example. We got together with friends that we don't, you know, we see maybe a couple times a year. It was a group of people. We had a dinner party and, uh, Scott had to excuse himself and I excused myself for a little while because we had multiple offers on a house that we had listed. Mm -hmm. And so we needed to take some time, talk to the seller and negotiate the offers and, you know, figure out which deal they were going to go with. And, you know, luckily we've kind of got that down to a science. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> right. the conversation, but I mean, quick, we but... eat, sleep and live real estate 24 seven and try and fit other things in as, as we can. And I, and some people may see that bad advice, but it can be the difference between, you know, 
fifty or hundred thousand dollar income or almost a million dollar income. Mm-hmm. Especially starting. Yeah. You know, you when really you have start, to start. I mean, you have to hustle. You have to, yeah, you have to hustle. And you know, and, and yeah. like what I was talking about before about um, you know, a seller interviewing other agents and stuff like that, you know, and it's their niece, their nephew, brother, sister, what have you. You know, everybody has to sell their first house. Everybody has to get that experience. Yeah. And probably one big piece of advice that I would give um, to an agent is maybe try and re- interview some different teams because the 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 insight that those people that have with experience is invaluable to be able to teach you how to negotiate and things like that. I showed a, I showed a $900,000 listing last, last week or two weeks ago um, up in Springboro. And I know the agent personally, and this is her first listing. And there were some things that I definitely would be doing very differently if that was my listing. And, and she's by herself. Mm -hmm. So she um, she's doing this not on a team or anything else, and she's doing actually a, a decent job. But there are some things I think she could have gained some some better advice mm-hmm. if she were on a team. So I would tell everybody starting out like get your database in line, try and try and get on a team. You know, I started out on a team when I got back into real estate. My buddy mm-hmm. from college, I was on his and his wife's team, and I learned a lot from them. Mm-hmm. And then got to a thing where things started evolving for me, and I had conversations with some of the management and so forth at the brokerage about, you know, should I go to, I was looking to go to another team to maybe get a different perspective. And they're like, Scott, I think, I think you got the ball going. You're doing all the right things. It's a big step, but I think you're able to go on your own. And I, I was really good at picking up things with real estate. You know, it was a, I, I hate to say it like this, like a natural ability yeah. mm-hmm. for me, because uh, I do have some sales background, which I hate to refer to real estate as sales. Right. You know, I like it more that you're you're guiding and 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 instructing and, and matchmaker. Yeah. <laughs> matchmaker. Um, with, with with your clients, um, but I I think that that has really helped me in my career. One of the one of the best pieces of advice that I got from somebody a long time ago is news. So things happen in real estate. Um, Hey, you're, you know, it's, it's a bad inspection or something comes back on the inspection. It's horrific. Or uh, something happened with your loan where now we're going to be pushing the the closing out, or maybe you're not closing at all. Uh, Mm. Maybe you have to terminate uh, whatever. And the best piece of advice, which I use today is that you deliver everything as news. It's not good news. It's not bad news. It's just news. Hmm. And it is amazing how that is Hmm. received by the people you're delivering to. So if you get, Oh man, I'm really sorry to tell you, I just got off the phone with the lender that, you know, if you deliver it, that's, you know, instead of just saying, Hey, just hung up with the lender, closing is going to be extended like two weeks. So we'll go ahead and mark that up for, you know, the 22nd and you know, everything will be good then. But if you get caught up in that drama too, then your buyer kind of freaks out. And I think that's why we get such good reviews that we made it simple and mm-hmm. easy and that you know there was no drama and, and it was stress-free. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, because yeah, people will give you back that energy you give off. Yeah. And I've Very had this cool. conversation with plenty of agents I'm like, hey, we're going to have to deliver. What? Oh, my gosh. Right. My buyer's going to, my seller's going to freak out. They're yeah. going to freak out because you're freaking out. You're freaking out. out. Right. <laughs> Exactly. So that's a, I mean, that's a good one. And then just, you know, if you do coaching or anything like that, if you can afford to do real estate coaching, um, it's definitely has worked great for us. We've been doing it for what, eight years, mm-hmm. seven years with real estate coaching and, and it has paid dividends for mm-hmm. us. Absolutely. Yeah, definite ROI is there for sure. That's yeah. awesome. That's mm-hmm. great. Well, thank you guys for being a part of it. We're glad. Uh, thanks for the invite. Love, yeah, thanks for having Love us. talking to you guys. I always love <laughs> And I'm, I'm now that we're invited over all the time for bourbon, it's yeah, going to be even right. better. So. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have to figure out a way to come up with a new ugly Christmas. I know. Thing, Let's not know. get into that. Well, that's that's for a whole other episode. <laughs> that was that was awesome. Whole other episode, that was awesome. That's yeah. an episode in and we'll of keep itself. Our, we'll keep everybody guessing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll see it. Don't worry. Uh, so, but thank you guys for being a part of it, and congratulations on all the success. And uh, absolutely. Just excited to keep following your guys' career and, and see where, where it goes. So yeah. well, we, and and we definitely appreciate real producers, man. I mean, we love Thank getting you. your yeah. getting yep. your magazine. You guys and, are great. And 
try and support some of the people that are in it. So yeah, thank you thank very you. much. I appreciate yes, that. We appreciate it Absolutely. from both you guys. Yeah, yeah thank sure. you. This is fun. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to the Cincinnati Real Producers podcast, powered by Nextdoor Photos. We do this every week, so be sure to subscribe so you can follow along. If you liked our conversation, leave us a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts.